Top fuel dragsters are the most prestigious drag racing vehicles on the planet, boasting unmatched speeds among four-wheeled vehicles as of the making of this video. This certainly earns them the title of Earth's fastest V8 engine vehicle. In today's video, we'll thoroughly explore how top fuel dragster engines can generate more than 11,000 horsepower and reach a speed of 338.4 miles per hour in just 3.6 seconds. Let's dive straight into our discussion about this monstrous engine. Okay, let's start by discussing the engine. Top fuel engines have a V8 configuration, which has become the most common choice for performance vehicle layouts. V engines are claimed to have many advantages, including a compact size, better balance, and superior performance potential. Also, the V8 engine in top fuel dragsters has a large capacity, clocking in at 8.2 litres. The second feature of this engine is its use of an overhead valve system. The choice of this valve system is based on several calculated advantages. Firstly, timing gear's durability is superior to systems that use a timing chain, as commonly seen in SOHC and DOHC valve systems. Given the large-sized valves and strong springs to avoid valve float, utilizing a timing chain to control 16 valves would be highly risky. Therefore, the OHV system is deemed more capable of handling the immense output and torque, exceeding 11,000 horsepower and 11,000 pound-feet of torque, making it suitable for providing rapid acceleration to the vehicle. The third key aspect of this engine is its hemi-engine configuration, or more precisely, the hemispherical combustion chamber. Hemi engines are known for their hemispherical chambers, but in top fuel dragsters, this shape is minimized to achieve a higher compression ratio. This is the reason top fuel dragsters use only two valves per cylinder. Apart from aiming for a high compression ratio, using four valves is considered to diminish the core performance of a top fuel dragster engine, as it could reduce low RPM torque and add to the vehicle's weight. This could also decrease the acceleration time achieved by a top fuel dragster. On the other hand, using two valves per cylinder offers other advantages. Additional space in the chamber can be utilized by implementing twin spark plugs. This is expected to process all the fuel supplied to the cylinder ideally and produce even better torque, hopefully enhancing acceleration. And if one spark plug malfunctions, the other will take over the ignition process for each cylinder. But it doesn't stop there. If both fail while the engine runs, it works like a diesel engine, relying on its self-ignition principle. This is also why the Hemi dome in top fuel engines is minimized, aiming to achieve the required compression ratio of 15 to 25 to 1 for self-ignition. The fourth point about the top fuel engine is its crankshaft type, which enhances torque and acceleration. This engine uses a cross-plane crankshaft, commonly found in muscle car engines. In this type of crankshaft, the crank pins are at a 90 degree angle, providing smoother and more evenly distributed power across the RPM range and better acceleration torque. This cross-plane design results in a firing order that alternates between cylinder banks, reducing vibration and allowing for smoother running. The 90-degree crank pin angle contributes to a more balanced engine operation, crucial for achieving the high power and acceleration necessary in top fuel drag racing. Okay, moving on to the fifth point, the lubrication system. Top fuel dragster's engine utilize a wet sump system which is similar to the systems used in most muscle car engines. The key components of this wet sump system include an external oil pump that's located outside of the engine, an oil filter that's attached to the pump, and the sump acts as a storage reservoir for the engine oil. As for the oil used in these engines, it typically has a large capacity of 12 quarts and is of a viscosity grade of either 60WT or 70WT nitro racing oil. This oil is supplied throughout the engine and its bearings, much like in standard engines. 
However, the cylinder head of a top fuel dragster's engine features a unique aspect of the lubrication system. The oil descends from the cylinder head to the oil pan through large openings in the cylinder head, continuing down to the middle of the crankcase. This lubrication mechanism lubricates the lifters and provides additional lubrication to the camshaft via the openings above it. Subsequently, the oil flows back down to the sump. Choosing a wet sump system with an external oil pump effectively reduces vehicle weight and mechanical load due to its more straightforward working mechanism and components than a dry sump system, which once again translates to better acceleration. OK, on to the next point, electrical systems. The electrical system in a top fuel dragster engine includes high capacity coils. Each coil in the pair can generate 44 amperes and 50,000 volts, totaling 88 amperes and 50,000 volts for the pair. This power is channeled through thick, separate cables to each pair of spark plugs for every cylinder. The reason is to avoid malfunctions during the combustion process. Even a single failure in the expansion process can be catastrophic for the team, as it means a momentary loss of power during acceleration. Therefore, instead of using more valves to supply additional fuel and air, maximizing the combustion process and minimizing the risk of ignition failure is wiser. This is achieved by using high-performance coils and two spark plugs per cylinder. Additionally, we find a cover atop the cylinder head, particularly over the spark plug area. Besides enhancing the engine's appearance and organizing the wiring system, the primary purpose of this engine cover is to protect against technical issues with the spark plugs. These issues could cause a plug to detach and shoot out like a bullet during the expansion process, posing a severe risk to those nearby. Therefore, this cover is made from titanium, specially designed to be bulletproof, serving as a crucial safety measure. Continuing to the seventh point, the fuel system of the top fuel engine. This is a crucial part of the top fuel dragster engine, enabling it to generate output power up to seven times greater than a similarly configured and sized muscle car engine. In practice, a top fuel dragster can accelerate from 0 to 160 km per hour in just about 0.8 seconds. However, this incredible acceleration comes at the cost of extremely high fuel consumption. A top fuel dragster typically consumes 16 to 20 gallons of fuel, a mixture of 90% nitromethane and 10% methanol in each quarter mile run. Nitromethane is chosen for several reasons. It is a monopropellant fuel that can combust without needing atmospheric oxygen as it carries its oxygen content. A question might arise. If it can combust without air, why do top fuel dragster engines still need air intake? To achieve maximum power, nitromethane must be mixed with methanol in a 9 to 1 ratio, as previously mentioned. Due to the presence of methanol in the mixture, it still requires oxygen, albeit at a lower air fuel ratio of 1.7 to 1, compared to the 14.7 to 1 ratio for gasoline and air. With this ratio, the power generated by the nitromethane-methanol mix balances out against gasoline with a lesser air mixture, which means the top fuel dragster fuel can be supplied in much larger quantities to the engine, up to seven times more than gasoline. This explains why top fuel dragster engines are significantly more potent than standard muscle car engines, considering the vast amount of fuel supplied to each cylinder for every power cycle. Another advantage is nitromethane has a much lower operating temperature than air or coolant, allowing top fuel dragsters to be built using billet aluminum for enhanced durability, eliminating the need for coolant channels in the cylinder block. Nitromethane also serves as a coolant substitute, negating the need for a radiator and reducing vehicle weight. Notably, Fuel supply in a top fuel dragster doesn't require a complex atomization system or high precision. Instead, the fuel is supplied as significantly as possible, approaching hydro-locking conditions, which can be risky for moving parts, especially the connecting rods. A statement from Haggerty's channel supports this. You're sucking air and fuel down through the 
through the blower, you're adding additional fuel in there to, to basically enrich in all that air mm -hmm. and shove as much into that cylinder as you possibly will physically fit. And it's like that far at top, at uh, full, full throttle from hydrolocking. It's got that much. <laughs> it's so, not atomized anymore, it's just wet. <laughs> In this video, you can also see a fuel flow demonstration of a top fuel dragster in action. That's the overview of the fuel supply system. At idle and a few milliseconds after the gas pedal is fully pressed, the spark plugs fail due to high temperatures and power, and the engine operates on a self-ignition principle, much like a diesel engine. After discussing fuel, let's move on to the eighth point, transmission. Top fuel engines don't have a conventional transmission system like typical vehicles. Instead, they transfer rotational power through a series of clutches that operate based on centrifugal force. This clutch system consists of several friction plates directly attached to flywheel components, integrated via a pin. Between each friction plate, there is a titanium clutch disc connected directly to the shaft, leading to the differential and then to the wheels. To facilitate interaction and transfer rotational power from the engine to the wheels, the system replaces the traditional clutch lever with centrifugal fingers, where these fingers work by sliding the friction plates. As their name suggests, centrifugal fingers operate using the centrifugal force generated when the engine runs and creates rotation. The faster the engine spins, the greater the centrifugal force, which lifts the centrifugal fingers to push the clutches into contact and grip each other. But there's more. To optimize performance across all RPM ranges, centrifugal fingers come in two different sizes and shapes, short centrifugal fingers and long centrifugal fingers. This design creates varying pressures to meet the engine's needs at each RPM range. And that wraps up the information we have for this video. What are your thoughts on the engine of the fastest four-wheeled vehicle on the planet? Do you think there's anything faster out there? We're eager to hear your opinions and insights. Please share them in the comments section below.